Hey, what is going on guys? In this video we're doing a comparison of the Samsung Galaxy S6 up against the HTC One M9. Now the notification light on the Galaxy S6 picture on the left pulses every 5 seconds and is quite large and bright and easy to see. Whereas the one on the HTC One M9 is very difficult to see, however it does pulse much faster at roughly every 3 seconds. Now because the size is hardly any difference, they're almost equal in that regard. However if you want their exact dimensions and weights, processor type, a whole bunch of other exact details, be sure to check out their individual video reviews, you can find any links to those videos in the video description. Moving along however, the HTC One M9 does weigh 19 grams more than the Galaxy S6 which is surprising considering they're almost the same size, which makes the Galaxy S6 better in terms of mobility. Now when it comes to appearance, it's all a matter of personal preference as both devices have elegant sleek looking designs. And when it comes to grip, well the HTC One M9 has this little advantage that the back is curved as you'll notice it's not a flat surface on the back so it arches a little bit better with your hand whereas the Galaxy S6 is flat. However I have to say the Galaxy S6 feels better simply because it's not metal and the One M9 is. Well metal isn't exactly the most comfortable type of material to hold in the hand. Now the Galaxy S6 has a Super AMOLED display which is 1440p or 2K whatever you want to call it. Whereas the HTC One M9 has a Super LCD 3 display and it is a 1080p screen. Both screens are protected by Corning Gorilla Glass 4 and because the Galaxy S6 has a higher resolution, it is tough to notice because both screens are rather small compared to say a computer monitor, but you can tell that the Galaxy S6 is sharper just by a little bit. But the one thing that the Galaxy S6 has a major advantage over is that brilliant color pop. Now there are some preset settings in the system settings menu which you can change the Galaxy S6 to make the colors more vivid and pop more or less if you want. So it gives the Galaxy S6 that advantage of more color pop. In regards to viewing angles, you'll notice that the One M9 was somewhat decent, but the Galaxy S6 is slightly better. Not only that, the Galaxy S screen can get a little bit brighter than the One M9. Now both devices are packing an equal amount of 3 gigs of RAM inside. In regards to storage, some people might be disappointed with the Galaxy S6 as it only comes in 32, 64, or 120 gigs of internal storage. There is no micro SD card slot, unfortunately, on any version. Whereas with the HTC One M9, it only comes with 32 gigs of internal storage. However, it does have a micro SD card slot, and it can support an expandable additional storage of up to two whopping terabytes. Talking about general performance, the Galaxy S6 has the same amount of RAM as the One M9, but it can't open as many apps at a given time. That's not a major deal because who's going to go through that many apps at one time? This is something curious to be aware of. In terms of general snappiness and performance, it performs great, and this is the fastest phone to open up the camera. As you can see, it's blazingly fast. But going through apps in your recently opened apps list and just general performance is somewhat decent. It's not the fastest out there, but it's pretty much what you expect on the market today. Whereas the performance on the One M9 is amazing. It can open more apps than the Galaxy S6, but just going through well, almost anything apart from the camera, which the Galaxy S6 is the fastest on the market to open, the One M9 is by far the fastest device I've ever used. It doesn't matter which app I tap on to open from a recently opened apps list, it's instant. This device handles multitasking and opening recent apps like a boss. It is the top dog by far. Now in regards to gaming, both devices do perform equally great. They are fantastic gaming devices and when it comes to playing the top graphic Android games, keep in mind that when gaming for a significant amount of time, both devices do get rather warm. Not hot, nothing to worry about, but warm, which is pretty normal for most devices on the market. And keep in mind that the Galaxy 6 has the tiny, tiny advantage because it has that 1440p screen. The list of connectivity similarities is quite long. Both of them do support GPS, Bluetooth, NFC chip, Wi-Fi, which supports 802.11, A, B, G, N, and A, C, and DLNA. Now, some of the cooler features that both of them do have is that they include an IR blaster, which means you can use each device as a universal remote control for your various home theater devices if they are supported. Furthermore, they also support Miracast, which means you can wirelessly mirror your device to your TV if it is Miracast supported, as I'm demonstrating right now. But the Galaxy S6 has a few advantages. It has this feature called Download Booster in which you can combine your LTE and Wi-Fi speeds together to download files that are 30 megabytes in size or larger. It also has a heart rate sensor which has been greatly improved over that year of last year's Galaxy S5 model. And of course it has a fingerprint scanner which again has been greatly improved over that on say the Galaxy Note 4. So what you guys are seeing is video footage recorded with the rear camera of the Galaxy S6. It's 4K footage compressed down to 1080p to match the rest of this video. Now, the audio is actually being recorded from my microphone not from the Galaxy S6 because it's quite windy outside. I do apologize about the dull colors but it was a grey day there's nothing I could do about it. 
Generally speaking though, the Galaxy S6 has one of the best cameras you can get on a smartphone on the market right now. And that stands for video recording or picture taking. You're getting some sharp, sharp details and some rich colors, again, aside from this lousy gray day that I had. And what you guys are seeing now is 4K footage recorded with the rear camera of the 1M9. And despite it having a 20.7 megapixel camera and the Galaxy S6 having 16, the Galaxy S6 camera is still better. The 1M9 has this problem where it'll randomly change exposure levels. It might not be that noticeable in this particular clip, but on many of my other tests, it has that issue. None of that in terms of color reproduction and general sharpness, it's okay, but nothing fantastic. And so what you guys are hearing and seeing is being recorded with the front-facing 5 megapixel camera of the Galaxy S6. And I have to say that it records at a pretty decent quality, especially for a front-facing camera. Nothing spectacular, but for front-facing it's pretty good. Keep in mind that it records in 1440p for the front-facing footage. Uh, this is probably due to it trying to match the resolution of its screen. And this time you guys are seeing and hearing footage taken with the front-facing 4 megapixel camera of the HTC One M9. You'll notice that the audio and video is out of sync. Uh, this only occurs with the One M9 when using the front-facing camera alone. I think this is, can be fixed with a software update uh, because when I use dual recording mode in which I use the front and rear cameras to record at the same time, there's no out of sync issue. Furthermore, with the rear camera when recording, there's no out of sync issue either. So this is something that has to be fixed with the software update and it's unfortunate that the 1M9 would suffer from something so ridiculous. So at this point I switched over to my camera microphone because I'm going to do my speaker comparison test. Both phones are on max volume, they're playing the exact same YouTube video from my YouTube channel on the exact same spot. So uh, keep in mind that the Galaxy S6 has a bottom speaker right here on the edge, uh, whereas the HTC One M9 has dual front facing speakers. So let's see what kind of results I can get. Up against the LG G Flex 2. Starting with the LED notification light with the One M9 on the left, you'll notice that it's really tiny, almost impossible. Now for the One M9. Against the LG G Flex 2. Starting with the LED notification light with the One M9 on the left, you'll notice that it's really tiny, almost impossible to see, but it does pop. So through the camera mic, it'll be difficult for you guys to tell, but with my own ears, it's a lot easier to tell the difference. Um, I have to say that the volume is almost comparable, almost the same thing, um, which is very bizarre, but the downfall of the Galaxy S6 is that it gets kind of muffled when you max out the volume, whereas on the HTC One M9, it has the clearest, sharpest sound on any smartphone I've ever heard. So regardless of which way you say, the speakers on the One M9 are better. Furthermore, there's also that issue that the speaker can be covered up rather easily. So if you're holding it like this to watch a video or playing games, if you cover it up by accident, it'll pretty much mute the entire thing. So you have to be rather careful about that. And in just over a day, I can get close to three hours of on-screen time on the Galaxy S6, and of that time using YouTube for about half an hour. And YouTube is a huge, massive battery hog. And that includes close to 25 minutes of call talk time. Whereas with the One M9 in about the same amount of time, and I can only get about two hours of on-screen time, so almost 45 minutes less than the Galaxy S6. Not only that, both devices do have two power saving modes and the Galaxy S6 comes with a fast recharging wire in which you can recharge about half the battery in about 35 minutes whereas with the One M9 you cannot. So each device comes with Lollipop straight out of the box and they do have a fair amount of exclusive features and you can find all of them in their individual tips and tricks videos, the links are in the video description. For now we'll focus on the Galaxy S6 and it does have a cleaner software than ever before in the Galaxy S series but it does have some problems, for example the app store if you haven't received a specific update, you'll notice that mine are not in alphabetical order and I have no option to change it into an alphabetical order unless you receive an Android update which includes myself and a lot of other users haven't received yet. Furthermore, the notification drawer has a brightness control, S Finder and Quick Connect permanently there. It's just there and you can't get rid of it and it's taking up unnecessary space. And whenever you turn off mobile data, you get this really annoying pop-up window saying that hey, you turn off mobile data, you no longer have an internet connection. Now switching over to the camera app, I wanted to show you some exclusive features that the Galaxy S6 has. And of course, right now I'm on the selfie mode. And I switched over to the rear camera. You notice that the interface is very clean and you do have the regular options to adjust the quality of the picture and video recording settings. And you have a whole bunch of settings you can have pre-installed or you can download additional ones from the Samsung store. You just go up in the download center and here you have some features that actually came originally with the Galaxy S3, the Note 2, previous Galaxy S devices pretty much, and you have them available to download for free. Maybe some developers will create more. So you have some other settings like Pro Mode, which is a manual setting. You have Dual Capture Mode, in which you can use the front and rear cameras to take a picture or video at the same time. And of course, you can adjust and move the floating window. And you can actually rearrange the size and move it around across the screen if need to. And you can actually do that while the video is being recorded. 
And switching over to the 1M9, you have a much cleaner interface. If you swipe over to the left of your home screen, you have the HTC Blink Feed, which is basically a news feed of your, well, news and social networks. The home widget is basically customizable according to whether you're at work or home. It'll pop up significant apps that might be relevant to your location. And it's a learning widget. It'll try to adapt according to your location. And generally, the quick settings on the notification bar resemble stock lollipop as you would see on the Nexus 6, for example. And while the screen is off, you have a few gesture wake up commands. For example, swiping up the screen will unlock the screen, turn it on, and take it to your home feed. If you swipe to the right, you'll be taken straight to your HTC Blink feed. And in the camera app, well, it's pretty similar to that of the Galaxy S6. Not the interface so much, but rather how it's simple, but you have a lot of customizable controls. Now, I mentioned the Galaxy S6 has some manual controls, well, the One M9 does as well. You have the ability to adjust some ISO levels, your white balance, depending on what type of lighting situation you're in, exposure values, and much more. You have some bokeh effects, which is basically your DSLR background blurry effect. Of course, you have dual capture mode, but this is actually a split capture, where literally the screen is split in half, or, well, whatever size you want to customize it to. And of course, the selfie camera has some similar functions as the Galaxy S6, so which you can beautify your face, which basically is an artificial way of hiding pimples and blemishes, I guess you could say. And I just wanted to quickly show you the gallery app on the One M9 and some of the customizable features that you have. Now, some of these things I'm showing you right here and now is actually exclusive to the One M9, but the Galaxy S6 has some decent photo editing functions within its gallery app. Basically, for both devices, you'll probably never need to download a third-party camera or gallery or heck, even photo editing app because the amount of features included in each device are great. Generally, they both have a fair amount of exclusive features packed inside, but I just couldn't fit it within this video. Despite the Galaxy S6 having the slightly sharper screen, the One M9 is actually the better multimedia device of the two, and that's simply due to its dual front-facing speakers which provide much sharper, cleaner sound. The Galaxy S6 provides some decent call quality, Nothing fantastic, it's just pretty average from what you find on the market right now. Whereas the One M9 is one of the best devices I've ever used in terms of phone call quality. The Galaxy S6 is one of the most hyped devices of the year and will continue to be until the end of the year. And there's no surprise about it, but it does have some flaws like no micro SD card slot, the notification drawer has unnecessary things within it you can't remove, and of course for certain people like myself who haven't received a certain update, you can't sort your apps in the app drawer by alphabetical order. Generally though, it has some very strong suits, the single speaker is surprisingly loud, it has one of the best screens and cameras you can find on a smartphone, and of course it has some cool Samsung features included. While the One M9 has a cleaner Android interface, it provides a great Android experience, but it does have some problems. For example, despite the rear camera having a high megapixel count, it's just okay, it's nothing great in terms of 4K recording. Both the front and rear cameras when recording change their exposure values for no apparent reason sometimes. And of course, the front-facing camera when recording on its own has the audio-video out of sync. These two devices will be some of the strongest competitors in the Android market of this year, and it seems as though the HTC One M9 took stock Android and then put HTC exclusive features on top of it, whereas it seems with Samsung, they took the Galaxy S5 and removed certain bloatware and then put it into the Galaxy S6. For the most part, both devices have their strong suits, very strong ones, but they do have some minor flaws. So with that said, be sure to check out their individual gaming videos, review videos, a whole bunch of other videos. And of course, check out my Facebook, Google+, Twitter links also in the video description. Hit the like button, subscribe, and thanks for watching.